To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han Chapter 36 Today's note from Peter says Tart and Tangy after school He's drawn two boxes, a yes or a no. I check yes and drop the note in his locker. After school ends, I meet Peter at his car and we caravan with his lacrosse friends to Tart and Tangy. I order an original frozen yogurt with Captain Crunch and strawberries and kiwi and pineapple. And Peter gets key lime with crushed up Oreos. I pull out my wallet to pay for my yogurt but Peter stops me. He winks at me and says, I got this. I whisper, I thought you weren't ever paying for anything. My boys are here. I can't look like a cheap ass in front of my boys. Then he puts his arm around me and says loudly, for as long as you're my girl, you don't pay for frozen yogurt. I roll my eyes, but I'm not going to say no to a free frozen yogurt. No boy has ever paid for me before. I could get used to this kind of nice treatment. I was bracing myself to see Genevieve here, but she doesn't show. I think Peter's wondering too because he keeps his eyes on the door with Genevieve. I keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. So far, she's been eerily, disturbingly quiet. She's hardly ever in the cafeteria during lunch because she and Emily Newsbaum have been eating off campus. And when I see her in the hallways, she fakes smiles at me without showing her teeth, which is somehow more menacing. When is she going to strike back against me? When will I have my Jamila Singh moment? Chris says Genevieve's too obsessed with her college boyfriend to care about me and Peter, but I don't believe it. I've seen the way she looks at him, like he's hers. The boys put a few tables together, and we basically take over the place. It's just like at the lunch table, with them being loud. Talking about the football game coming up on Friday. I don't think I say two words. I don't really have anything to add. I just eat my free frozen yogurt and enjoy the fact that I am not at home organizing my shoe closet or watching the golf channel with my dad. We're walking to our cars when Gabe says, Hey, Lara Jean, did you know that if you say your name really fast, it sounds like large? Try it, Lara Jean. Dutifully, I repeat, Lara Jean, Lara Jean, Largy. Actually, I think it sounds more like Largy than large. Gabe nods to himself and announces, I'm going to start calling you large. You're so little, it's funny, right? Like those big guys who go by the name Tiny? I shrug. Sure. Gabe turns to Daryl. She's so little, she could be our mascot. Hey, I'm not that small, I protest. How tall are you? Daryl asks me. 5'2", I fib. It's more like 5'1 and a quarter. Tossing his spoon in the, in the trash, Gabe says, You're so little, you could fit in my pocket. All the guys laugh. Peter's smiling in a bemused way. Then Gabe suddenly grabs me and throws me over his shoulder like I'm a kid and he's my dad. Gabe, put me down! I shriek, kicking my legs and pounding on his chest. He starts spinning around in a circle and all the guys are cracking up. I'm going to adopt you, large. You're going to be my pet. I'll put you in my old hamster cage. I'm giggling so hard I can't catch my breath and I'm starting to feel dizzy. Put me down! Put her down, man, Peter says, but he's laughing too. Gabe runs towards Tobias' pickup truck and sets me down in the back. Get me out of here, I yell. Gabe's already running away. All the guys start jogging into their cars. Bye, large, they call out. Peter jogs over to me and extends his hand so I can hop down. Your friends are crazy, I say, jumping onto the pavement. They like you, he says. Really? Sure. They used to hate when I would bring Jen places. They don't mind if you hang out with us. Peter slings his arm around me. Come on, large, I'll take you home. As we walk to his car, I let my hair fall in my face so he doesn't see me smiling. It sure is nice being a part of a group, feeling like I belong. To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han Chapter 37 I volunteered to bake six dozen cupcakes for Kitty's PTA Bake Sale. I did it because Marco's done it for the past two years. Marco only ever did it because she didn't want people to think Kitty's family wasn't involved enough in PTA. She did brownies both times, but I signed up for cupcakes because I thought they'd be a bigger hit. I bought a few different kinds of blue sprinkles and I made little toothpick flags that say Blue Mountain Academy. I thought Kitty would have fun helping me decorate. Now I'm realizing Marco's way was better 
because with brownies, you just pour them in the pan, bake and slice, and there you go. Cupcakes are a lot more work. You have to scoop the perfect amount six dozen times, and then you have to wait for them to cool, and then your frosting is sprinkling. I'm measuring out my eighth cup of flour when the doorbell rings. Kitty! I scream. Get the door! It rings again. Kitty! From upstairs, she screams back, I'm running an important experiment! I run to the door, I fling it open without bothering to check who it is. Peter. He busts up laughing. You have flour all over your face, he says, dusting off my cheeks with the backs of his hands. I twist away from him and wipe my face with my apron. What are you doing here? We're going to the game. Didn't you read my note from yesterday? Oh, shoot. I had a test and I forgot. Peter frowns and I add, I can't go anyway because I have to bake 72 cupcakes by tomorrow. On a Friday night? Well, yeah. Is this for the PTA bake sale? Peter brushes past me and starts taking off his sneakers. You guys are a no-shoes house, right? Yeah, I say surprised. Is your mom making something too? Rice Krispie treats. Another way smarter choice than 72 cupcakes. Sorry you came over here for nothing. Maybe we can go to the game next Friday, I say, expecting him to put his shoes back on. But he doesn't. He wanders into the kitchen and sits on a stool. Huh? Your house looks the same as I remembered, he says, looking around. He points at the framed picture of me and Marco taking a bath when we were babies. Cute. I can feel my cheeks burn. I go and turn the photo over. When have you been to my when have you ever been to my house? Back in seventh grade. Remember how we hang out? In your neighbor's tree house? I had to pee once and you let me use your bathroom. Oh yeah, I say. It's funny to see a boy other than Josh in our kitchen. I feel nervous for some reason. How long is it gonna take? He asks me his hands in his pockets. Hours, probably. I pick up the measuring cup again. I can't remember what cup I was on. Peter groans. Why can't we just go to the store and buy some? I start measuring the flour that's in the bowl, separating it into piles. Because, do you think any of the other moms are buying cupcakes from Food Lion? How would that make Kitty look? Well, if it's for Kitty, then Kitty should be helping. Peter hops off the stool and comes up to me and slides his hands around my waist and tries to untie my apron strings. Where is the kid? I stare at him. What are you doing? Peter looks at me like I'm a dummy. I need an apron too if I'm going to help. I'm not trying to get my clothes all messed up. We're not going to be done in time for the game, I tell him. Then we'll just go to the party after. Peter shoots me an incredulous look. That was in the note I wrote you today. God, why do I even bother? I was really busy today, I say meekly. I feel bad. He's following through on his end of the deal and faithfully writing me a note a day and I can't even be bothered to read them. I don't know if I can go to a party. I don't know if I'm allowed to go out that late. Is your dad home? I'll ask him. No, he has, he's at the hospital. Besides, I can't just leave Kitty here by herself. I pick up the measuring cup again. Well, what time does he get home? I don't know. Maybe late. Or maybe like in the next hour. But Peter will be long gone by then. You should just go. I don't want to hold you up. Peter groans. Covey, I need you. Jen hasn't said a word about us yet, which is kind of the whole point of this. And she might bring that dickhole she's dating. Peter pushes out his lower lip. Come on, I came through for you with Josh, did and I? Yes, I admit, but Peter, I have to make these cupcakes for the big sale. Peter stretches his arms out. Then I'll help you. Just give me an apron. I back away from him and start rummaging around for another apron. I find one with a cupcake print and hand it to him. He makes a face and points at mine. I want the one you're wearing, but it's mine. It's red and white gingham with little brown bears. My grandma got it for me in Korea. I always bake in this. Just wear that one. Slowly, Peter shakes his head and holds out his hand. Give me yours. You owe me for not reading any of my notes. I untie the apron and hand it over. I turn around and go back to my measuring. You're a bigger baby than Kitty. Just hurry up and give me a task. Are you qualified though? Because I only have exactly enough ingredients for six dozen cupcakes. I don't want to have to start over. I know how to bake. Okay then. Dump those sticks of butter into the mixing bowl. And then, and then when you're done, I'll give you your next task. Peter rolls his eyes, but he does as he's told. So this is what you do on Friday nights? Stay home and bake in your PJs? I do other stuff too, I say. 
tying my hair into a tighter ponytail. Like, I'm still so flustered from Peter's sudden appearance that I can't think. Um, I go out. Where? God, I don't know. Quit interrogating me, Peter. I blow my bangs out of my eyes. It's getting really warm in here. I might as well just turn off the oven because Peter's arrival has slowed down his whole process. At this rate, I'll be up all night. You made me lose my count on the flower. I'm going to have to start over from scratch. Here, let me do it, Peter says, coming up close behind me. I jerk away from him. No, no, I'll do it, I say. And he shakes his head and tries to take the measuring cup from me. But I won't let go. And flower puffs out of the cup and into the air. It does us both. Peter starts cracking up and I let it out an outraged shriek. Peter! He's laughing too hard to speak. I cross my arm. I better still have enough flour. You look like a grandma, he says, still laughing. Well, you look like a grandpa, I counter. I dump the flour in my mixing bowl back into the flour canister. Actually, you're really a lot like my granny, Peter says. You hate curse. You hate cussing. You like to bake. You stay at home on Friday nights. Wow, I'm dating my granny. Gross. I start measuring again. One, two. I don't stay home every Friday night. Three. I've never seen you out. You don't go to parties. We used to hang out back in the day. Why'd you stop hanging out? Four. I, I don't know. Middle school was different. Why does he want, what does he want me to say? That Genevieve decided I wasn't cool enough so I got left behind? Why is he so clueless? I always wondered why you stopped hanging out with us. Was I on five or six? Peter, you made me lose my count again. I have that effect on women. I roll my eyes at him and he grins back at me, but before he can say anything, I yell, Kitty, get down here. I'm working. Peter's here. I know that will get her. Five seconds flat. Key's running into the kitchen. She skips to a stop, all of a sudden shy. Why are you here? She asks him. To pick up Lara Jean. Why aren't you helping? I was running an experiment. Want to help me? I ask for him. Sure, he'll help you. To Peter, I say, you're distracting me. Go help Kitty. I don't know if you want my help, Catherine. See, I'm really distracting to women. I make them lose their count. Peter winks at her and I make a gaggy sound. Why don't you stay down here and help us bake? Bow ring. Kitty turns tail and runs back up the stairs. Don't you dare try to sprinkle or frost when it's all over, I yell. You haven't earned the right. I'm creaming the butter and Peter's cracking eggs into a chip salad bowl when my dad gets home. Whose car is that out front, Dad daddy asks as he walks into the kitchen. He stops short. Hello, he says surprised. He has a Chan's Chinese bistro bag in his hands. Hey, daddy, I say, like it's perfectly normal that Peter Kravinsky is cooking in our kitchen. You look tired. Peter stands up straighter. Hi, Dr. Covey. My dad sets the bag down on the kitchen table. Oh, hello, he says, clearing his throat. Nice to see you. You're Peter K, right? Right. One of the old gang, my dad says jovially, and I cringe. Where are you kids up to tonight? I'm baking cupcakes for Kitty's PTA bake sale and Peter's helping, I say. My dad nods. Are you hungry, Peter? I have plenty. He lifts the bag. Shrimp lo mein, kung pao chicken. Actually, Lara Jean and I were going to stop by our friend's party, Peter says, if that would be okay. I'll break her back early. Before my dad can answer, I say to Peter, I told you I have to finish these cupcakes. Kitty and I will finish them, my dad interjects. You two go to that birthday party. My stomach flips. It's really okay, Daddy. I have to be the one to do them. I've decorated them specially. Kitty and I will figure it out. You can go get change. We'll keep working on these cupcakes. I open and close my mouth like a trout. All right, then. And I don't make a move. I just stand there because I'm afraid to leave the two of them alone together. Peter smiles at me broadly. You heard the man. We've got this covered. I think, don't act too confident because then my dad will think you're arrogant. There are certain outfits you have that make you feel good every time you wear them. And then there are outfits where you were, wore them too many times in a row because you like them so much. And now they just feel like garbage. I'm looking at my closet now and everything looks like garbage. My anxiety is only compounded by the fact that I know Jen will be wearing the exact right thing. Because she always wears the exact right thing. And I have to be wearing the right thing too. Peter wouldn't have come by and made such a point of going to this party if it weren't important to him. I pull on my jeans and try on different tops. A frilly peach one that suddenly looks prissy in my eyes. A long fuzzy sweater with a penguin on it that looks too kiddish. I'm stepping into a pair of gray shorts with black suspenders when someone knocks at my door. 
I freeze and grab a sweater to cover myself up. Lara Jean, it's Peter. Yes? Are you almost ready? Almost. Just, just go downstairs. I'll be down soon. He lets out an audible sigh. Okay, I'm going to see what the kid's doing. When I hear his footsteps walking away, I scramble and try a cream polka dot blouse with the short suspenders and sobble. It's cute, but is it too cute? Too much? And should I do black tights or black knee socks? Marco said I look Parisian in this outfit. Parisian is a good thing. It's sophisticated, romantic. I try on a beret just to see the effect and I immediately throw it off. Definitely too much. I wish Peter hadn't stuck up on me with this. I need time to plan, to prepare. Though truthfully, if he'd asked me ahead of time, I would have come up with an excuse not to go. It's one thing to go to Tart and Tangy after school, but a party with all of Peter's friends, not to mention Genevieve. I hop around my room searching for my over-the-knee socks, then searching for my strawberry lip pot that looks like a strawberry. Gosh, I really need to clean my room. It's hard to find anything in this mess. I run to Marco's room for her big grandpa cardigan, and I pass Kitty's open door where I see Peter and Kitty lying on the floor working with her lap set. I root through Marco's sweater drawer, which is now t-shirts and shorts because she's taken most of her sweaters. No grandpa cardigan. But at the bottom of the drawer, there is an envelope, a letter from Josh. I want to open it so badly. I know I shouldn't. Carefully, ever so carefully, I take out the letter and unfold it. Dear Margo, you say we had to break up because you don't want to go to college with a boyfriend and you want your freedom and you don't want to be held back. But you know, and I know, that's not the real reason. You broke up with me because we had sex and you were scared of getting close to me. I stopped reading. I can't believe it. Chris was right and I was wrong. Marco and Josh did have sex. It's like everything I thought I knew is the opposite. I thought I knew exactly who my sister was, but it turns out I don't know anything. I hear Peter calling my name. Lara Jean, are you ready yet? Hastily, I fold the letter up and put it back in the envelope. I put it back in the drawer and slammed the drawer shut. Slammed the drawer shut. Coming.